Yeah, we're about to do some renovations. You know, we're doing the whole Airbnb thing. My wife does organic juice. And so this is where she juices. That's delicious. It's really good, actually. I'm gonna grab my bottle of water. I've had this studio since 1995, and I've recorded a lot of Arrested Development albums here. I call it the podium. It's where I make my speech. Arrested Development's whole sort of feel for me was to create family, almost like a community. I wanted it to feel like a neighborhood. Then the other sort of branches that come from that is showing black solutions because there's a lot of issues going on in the black community, but there wasn't a whole lot of solutions within hip hop. Hip hop was very much a, a primal style music. So wanting to bring more of the spirit of who we are as, as a human being and as a hip hop artist. So all of these sort of components to me make up what Arrested Development was. Go! As I look out my window, I see the little ones playing amongst each other with the water gun. Pure poverty, generations of good people and cycles of poverty. It bothers me, so I ask myself, I say, how you doing as much as you can for the struggle? No. Am I doing as much as I can for the struggle? No. Then why do I cry when my people are in trouble? No. My ancestors slapped me in the face and said, go! You know, I'm from Milwaukee. It was statistically known as the worst place for black men to live in the United States. The danger mainly was from racism and from, unfortunately, black culture becoming more and more toxic because of crack. One of the worst situations that happened was I came home from school. I got closer to the house. I'm about 10 years old at this point. I was by myself. My mom and dad worked late every day. And the picture window was smashed open. Our furniture had been stolen from our living room, which was right behind the picture window, and put it on top of the house. And our door had a swastika painted on it. and. Our backyard, where I used to play my swing set and all of this stuff was smashed with a, with a sledgehammer. And it was just like total destruction. And I just was like, that was one of the worst experiences that I've had growing up in Milwaukee. And so being raised there, I was starting to become more, more conscious, which means I was starting to understand my history as a black person. I was starting to understand and love my skin color, my hair, my texture, you know, the kinkiness of my beard. I was starting to embrace who I was, right? Because for so long, you're, you're told not to embrace it. You're told to act more white or be or look more European or dress more civilized or whatever you want to call it. There's this divide in our community, in the black community, because I'm starting to wear daishikis. I'm starting to wear this, this stuff that's, that's showing my, my, my pride and who we are as a people. And then there's other people that laugh at that in, the, in our community, in the black community. So they're laughing at it. They're dissing it. And they're looking down upon it because I'm not dressed like them, which at the time was jerry curls, which is like a real wet, juicy style of hair <laughs> that blacks were <laughs> loving for quite a while. And I, I never was into it. But anyway. See, I was resting at the park, minding my own. Then it says I kick up the treble zone. On my radio tape, play a box right. Box Just right. loud enough so folks can hear his hype scene. It happened in real life when I'm with my girlfriend and I'm chilling and we're at a park in Milwaukee, and I start getting messed with by some guys. My day was going great, and my soul was at ease until a group of brothers, brothers. started bugging out, bugging drinking out. the 40, the 40 going ounce, the nigger route. going the nigger route. So now at that point, I'm describing them as the nigger route. So this is, I'm sort of separating the brothers. They're brothers at first, they're bugging out, okay, that's cool. Disrespecting my black queen, black queen. holding their crosses and being obscene. obscene. See, I know the type. Know they the got drunk, they what? got guns, and yes, what? they want to fight. And they see a young couple having a time that's good. Time is and good. the Eagles want to test the brother's manhood. manhood. So they came to test speech because of my heritage yes. and the loud, bright colors that I wear. Boom. So that song, I really purposely tried to stay on three tracks, right? So the nigga to me is not a black person. To me, the nigga is a black person who is wallowing in oppression. To me, an African 
is who all black people are ultimately. We're from African descent, we're Africans, right? This is somebody that has found their consciousness, right? And then a black man is someone in between. They're, they're really not wallowing in oppression and they haven't gotten out of oppression. They're just, they're just trying to make it. So to me in this song, I'm trying to keep straight all three of these, these sort of phases of, of someone's journey. You know what I mean? So, um, so yeah, I do use nigga, but I, I tried to use it in the exact same context every single time I used it, as opposed to just a nigga means black person. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, so I say, like, I told the nigga, please let us pass, friend. I said, please, because I don't like killing Africans. But he wouldn't stop, and I ain't Ice Cube, so I had to take the brother out for being rude. So even then, I'm just, I'm still calling him my brother, but I'm saying you're acting like a nigga right now. I told the niggas, please let us pass, let us pass I said, please, because I don't like killing Africans. But he wouldn't stop, and I ain't Ice Cube. Oh. But I had to Hold take on. the brother Hold out on. for being Here rude. Like I said before, I was mad oh, about I it. It's a very real thing because in the black community, because of oppression, everyone's at their different stages in that journey. Everyone's either woke, as they now call it, or conscious or awake, or they're not yet. And if they're not yet, it's very easy for them to be wrapped up into a paradigm of thinking it's cool to rob somebody, thinking it's cool to mess with somebody because they're not dressed properly or don't have the right, you know, shoes on it or right this, that, and the third. You know, it's a very real, it's a real thing. And so I think people could really relate to it. I decided to leave Milwaukee because I felt like I had already had a gun pulled on me by this time. And so I said, if I stay here, I feel like I'm going to end up dead. And truth be told, a lot of my friends that were from Milwaukee, that stayed in Milwaukee, have, have ended up being murdered. So I do feel like I would have been one of them. I wanted to move to Atlanta because there was rumors of Atlanta being like the land of milk and honey for black people. Opportunities, job opportunities, black people are doing great things here. And you know, it, it, a lot of that was really true. I need some time to ease my mind. I need some time to ease my mind. Between my mama's hips, I'm caught up by her hands because she understands it's that bond that keeps the movement moving on. Life is surrounded with so many insecurities. Backstabbing is like breathing when it poverty. I try to make my sanity with the insane. Got a secondary the most when they scrap for money, but then again, money can cause even more death. When an African turns bigger, step and fetch it all. I just say, when price is right, you can buy us all. Well, not me, because I don't truly really give a care about you. I move in poverty and wealth, but I surely move. Syncopated with your beat or your whack ass groove. My break beat is to break away from your thing. All these things you put on me makes this brother sing. The South is complex. You know, historically, the South is number one cotton fields and farming, you know, nature. But then also, the South is Negro spirituals and it's church services, gospel music. So it's that too. And then it's for black people, it is history. Most of us, when we were chattled here for slavery, were brought to the South to work. So our ancestry, generations after generations, were right here in the South. And so I speak of it from my perspective as a Black person, but yeah, the South is racism too, you know, being here in the South. I mean, to this very day, it's like that. this mentality that we're not human, that we are deserving of oppression and deserving of second or third class citizenship goes back to the 1600s where this whole idea of whiteness and blackness became a thing. And so slavery was such a heinous, and I'm talking about chattel slavery, the Atlantic slave trade, not the ancient slaveries that have happened forever. But with chattel slavery, it was such a inhumane and such a bigger than life evil, that to justify it, 
people that were making the most money from slavery would start saying that black people were no longer human and they were therefore it was fine to enslave them. It was fine to, to treat them literally like cattle. Unfortunately, over many years, black people have been portrayed as less than human, animalistic. Did you hear me? More specifically, violent, lazy, incapable of contributing intellectual contributions to the world. These things were worldwide thought processes that were spreading. So there's a song that, that I, I wrote called Ease My Mind, and one of the lyrics that I sing is that you have to consciously keep out these, these messages of we're less than, we're less than, or else you'll just accept it. My mind and soul is even more important than body. Put my body in all anxiety. Me, why my mind is so remotely dwells within that fine spot between. <laughs> So I move on with confidence and harmony And do my thing to resist this white society Cause if you don't resist, then I mean consciously And pull your subconscious into accepting it I ain't accepting it I keep my focus, I keep my focus I ain't accepting it To be a face pencil to draw a smile on me And serve my prayer to get my earthly body in her peace And serve my prayer to get my earthly body in her peace Until that day upon which my soul's release Big down, come there is initially just a fight to make sure that the imagery that we're putting out there is not all imagery of our more lower level impulses. So when there's gangster music only out there and people are always holding a gat or always, you know, disrespecting a woman or always selling drugs or always, then that's, that is contributing to this long-standing imagery that that we're less than, that we're not capable of other things. <laughs> These things sort of self-circulate and it becomes a, a mantra and, a, and, a, and a, a fact that's not actually true. So, you know, what I face as a creative is to make sure that these things aren't perpetuated and make sure that some other things are perpetuated about us. So, you know, and who we are as a people. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. Black is beautiful. You need these mantras to remind yourself to fight against this other onslaught of messages saying the opposite.